This last class of drug I want to talk about before we get into diet is very relevant. Sulfonylureas are a class of drug that will stimulate the pancreas to just start making more insulin. And so it's saying, hey, pancreas, I already know you're making a lot of insulin, but I just want more because we just need more insulin in order to push down that glucose. And then, of course, in some instances of insulin resistance, when it gets to the point of type 2 diabetes, they are also just prescribed exogenous insulin. A type 2 diabetic will be given insulin injections in order to control their blood sugar levels. I hope that you're already beginning to see the problem with this view. Now that you have embraced an insulin-centric view, you can start to see how catastrophic that really is. Now, remember, the conventional clinical paradigm is glucose-centric. And so the conventional clinician is looking at this and thinking, well, the only thing here that matters is the glucose. They may not even know what the insulin levels are because it's just, it's such an afterthought. It's not even an afterthought. It is not a thought. It doesn't enter into the conversation. So if your view is only, we need to do whatever we can to lower the glucose, even if it means increasing the insulin, well, then who cares? Until you actually start looking at the clinical outcomes as published where you end up coming to statements like this, a direct quote, there is no significant evidence of long-term efficacy of insulin on any clinical outcome in type 2 diabetes. In fact, it gets even worse. But what do you think? If you take this person and you start pushing up their insulin, what will happen to their insulin resistance? It will indeed go up. It increases insulin resistance. These are some more direct quotes from these studies. Long-term insulin therapy increases insulin resistance or intensive insulin therapy increases insulin resistance. Again, direct quotes from these studies. Now, I've also suggested to you that insulin resistance is fundamental to most chronic diseases. So if we're making the body more insulin resistant, you shouldn't be very surprised to find that once insulin therapy starts, patients will get fatter, they will have an increased risk of cancer, death, and an increased risk of cardiovascular death. So just as a funny sort of example, I can say funny because this one's just the body fat. There's nothing funny about the next ones. Um, but here, this is a study in type 2 diabetics. <coughs> and from the, from the moment they start insulin therapy up till six months, the insulin dose increases over these six months. No surprise, right? Insulin increase, too much insulin increases insulin resistance. Body weight, for reasons I don't have time to get into, also goes up. Any person who has made you believe that body fat or obesity is purely a result of calories in versus calories out is silly and deserves to be laughed at. This is an alternative view of human obesity is that it is just as much an endocrine or hormone phenomenon as it is a caloric phenomenon. The, in the, body, the cells of the body need to be told what to do with the energy they have. Just as a very brief tangent, and I told myself I wouldn't do any, and now I think I'm on my third. <laughs> I, I grow fat cells in my, in my laboratory, in my, in my little Petri dishes. What, one of the ironies of, of cell culture work is that it is super easy to grow muscle cells and it is super hard to grow fat cells. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> we wish, we only wish it were like that in the body. So we have fat cells growing on the bottom of a little Petri dish and they are swimming in a little bath of, of calories. Lots of fats, lots of glucose. They are loving life and they are skinny little teeny cells. Even though there's tons of calories there. Why aren't you taking those calories in, you silly fat cells? Because they don't know what to do with the energy yet. A cell isn't some rational little being. It needs to be told what to do, like a naughty little kid. And I, I'm up to my eyeballs in that, at home. So what tells the fat cell what to do with that energy? Insulin. The moment we spike insulin into that culture and we come back 24 hours later, now they're big and juicy. Put a little more in 24 hours later, they're bigger still. One of the reasons why a type 1 diabetic kid gets scrawnier and scrawnier, even though their appetite keeps going up and up, is that it is literally impossible for the body of any animal to store fat unless insulin is elevated. In contrast, if insulin is down, it is impossible to keep that fat. So as we bump the insulin up and body weight is going up, they're getting fatter, in 20 pounds, or, or sorry, 10 pounds fatter, all while they start to eat a little less. Well, thermodynamics have just been broken. Well, of course they haven't. It's just we can't really account for every unit of energy in the body. It gets too complicated, but insulin starts to literally slow down the metabolic rate, all in an effort to promote greater fat storage. And that's what this study found here.